So it's time now for 10-15 uh, minutes of, of questions. Um, so I will give a micro to the uh, panelists here. Um, who wants to start? I think uh, they raised a lot of interesting questions or uh, issues. I think first of all, in my opinion, the challenges are huge. Uh, so that came up also in the presentation of Eugenio and Amandine and Roman. But especially one struck me, and that's the fact that uh, we have to reach three million of workers uh, to train them by 2020. Uh, that's an incredible challenge. I don't know, Eugenio, uh, you have two million members. Uh, how do you, because I, I read in your slides a lot of challenges, but maybe less solutions. How do you see it? Yes, of course, uh, in, the, in the construction sector, I mean, in the energy sector, not all my members, uh, I mean, we don't own uh, the, all the, the employees in the sector. Of course, there are different works and, and, we, and there are different sections in the construction sector. Uh, I think the number is important. I took this number from the Build Up uh, Skills Initiative and uh, and of course, uh, um, the issue is the following. Uh, of course, we have this number, uh, but the, the approach to training uh, from SMEs and the, the employers in general depends also on the demand that there is in the market. Um, that's why I think we, we also need to focus on the other side, on, the, on explaining to the ones that are buying or they need to renovate, what are the long-term savings in applying energy efficiency uh, solutions. Uh, the truth is that uh, a, small, a small enterprise responds a lot to the, to the market needs. If the needs of uh, the market are towards uh, let's renovate, uh, I need to renovate uh, because I want to have my um, apartment or building more energy efficient, efficient. then also uh, naturally the employers and the SMEs will uh, have this feeling to adapt. And I think this is as a starting point. And then as a second point, of course we need to uh, group enterprises in order to have uh, uh, specific uh, 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 trainings. We need. I, I was. Uh, I didn't know about uh, this and then about this uh, project on uh, that it just started about uh, BIM. Uh, we need this kind of support uh, on the on the fields. Having project like this that not say only on a theoretical theoretical basis, but they say, uh, given the fact that we have uh, financial support, for example, in this case from the European Union, let's test this into directly into uh, uh, the companies. In fact, then we can maybe uh, keep in touch and see whether uh, amongst uh, some companies there could be also some of our companies in the sense because also BIM from our side, it's a, it's a, big, uh, it's a big challenge. Um, and how can we increase demand? Because basically mm -hmm. also out of the evaluation of built-up skills and, and other uh, programs, we have seen that uh, budget-wise, it's not an issue. Uh, so that means that most of the trainings or most of the member states, they have enough money to organize trainings. And, and in many member states, there are uh, financial streams ongoing and, mm -hmm. and uh, officialized uh, to, to invest in trainings. Mm -hmm. So it's basically how can we try to attract that uh, the construction uh, people are going to be more interested in following these trainings. And and you are sitting here with, with two people from the European Commission besides you. What do you expect from them? Uh, and I will maybe give a hint. Uh, in 2008, 2009, we worked on the recast EPPD. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a huge debate about energy audits to make them compulsory. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, they became compulsory. And in a short time frame, lots of member states have set up train, training programs and, and set up the whole mechanism to have everywhere compulsory programs for, to have enough energy audits and energy auditors. Mm -hmm. Is this a way forward that uh, the commission should come with maybe at EU level compulsory training programs? 
well, I, it, I think in general the, the point is the following. First, first what I was saying, the fact that uh, when, I, when I talk about demand, I talk also about the, the end users of uh, the energy efficiency. And that's why, for example, we work a lot with the um, Federation of, of Mortgages because also on the side of uh, uh, the banks that give uh, loans, there is not enough uh, uh, knowledge of uh, the construction sector and the, especially in uh, the section on, on energy uh, efficiency. If uh, you go, always on this side, on the demand side, if you go to, the, uh, to your bank and you say, I would like to renovate, what are the options? And the one that is there is not giving you the right answers. Uh, in, in, sense, in the sense of saying there are loans given for, given for the energy efficiency, of course, you will, you will not be able, uh, I mean, you, will, you are not very attached to renovate. And this, of course, goes back to the ones that uh, has to renovate the building, I mean, the builder of, of the store that is not very interested in, uh, in that because he has no demand. From what you say as about the, the funding uh, on energy efficiency and obligatory training uh, programs, I think, um, as a, in general, I'm, I'm not really in favor of making this uh, kind of trend com compulsory. As I was saying, you need uh, um, formal and informal ways. You need to find a way to attract the companies to get into uh, the train by making them a bit easier. Uh, the funds are there, but uh, uh, as, as, as we know, in many cases, to apply for funds, uh, sometimes it is quite difficult. It is easy for, some, for, for a company that has uh, 100 people, 150 people, 200 people maybe, to have a specific person who looks at the funding opportunities that there are at the local, at the regional, the national level funding. But if you have an enterprise, and this is the case of three, four people, to have a person who has the right contacts, the right experience, the right things to apply for a specific training, training program, sometimes it is... Uh, uh, difficult. That's why I'm sponsoring a lot the grouping, because the more you are, the more you have maybe the sometimes human resources capabilities to go for, uh, for this, as you will be a big company. And it will be enough to bridge the, the gap, eh? because that's the, the main issue eh? we, we face. Eh? How are we going to scale up? Eh? There are some very nice examples over the last couple of years, also due to uh, built up and built up skills. Uh, but we see that there is a huge problem with scaling up. So maybe also the floor to, to Roman. Uh, how do you see that yourself? Um, and, and is there a kind of a role uh, for, for ECB and other organizations? Um, if we are speaking about skills, of course, uh, uh, we, as someone had mentioned, for me at least, next year we will get some uh, kind of uh, a resume of uh, the second pillar build up skills project so we, we would see what they really achieved so I, they are working on it so I would be really happy to read it and that maybe it's rather let's say it's rather probable that they have reached this target or let's say they're not a close one and also it's necessary to to see that uh, there are connected issues so Usually there is rather important the end user, owner of the building. So when uh, he would like to get some good building, he will make some pressure on construction companies and they will address it somehow. And on other way, if there are well-educated workers in construction company, then can, let's say, uh, persuade end user about, let's say, some uh, positive aspects of such a building. So let's say a connected issue. Also, uh, in construction sector, it's rather obvious uh, that uh, a lot of skills are being upskilled via uh, learning by doing. So it's not necessarily sometimes that whole comp companies upskill, but few workers, and then others are just, let's say, observing the activity of those workers and learning by doing and also upskilling themselves, not, so let's say, without any following official training. Amadine, do you want to add something? Or? Well, I mean, from our point of view, looking at the projects, it's obvious that it's, it's really a combination of different tools that will, you know, help in this, in this field. 
the most successful projects have really combined many different tools. And as I said, the, what has been done in those projects is essential, but we, we always made clear that we, we were not there to fund running training schemes. We were there to kickstart a movement that then needs to be scaled up, as Roman said. But, I mean, in that respect, um, this is also why now for the future work program, we also want to look at the other side, at the demand side, because this, at some point, this has also to fly on, on its own, so. But it also means that <laughs> with, with uh, the ongoing built-up skills uh, action plans and, and uh, programs, that we are not going to achieve the target of three million. That was also not the aim. Uh, so, so, but we can already answer that we are not going to achieve it. Uh, so that's for sure. We are doing the evaluation eh, of all the, the, the programs, eh, so we know that. Uh, but there are very interesting projects, eh, like I said, with, with very interesting, eh, like Amandine showed. Uh, but now it's really the, the, the question about scaling up. Is there somebody else in the, in the room who wants to yeah, have specific questions? Uh, yes, okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm quite familiar with the skills uh, for the building uh, construction sector, for the building sector, uh, to update, uh, you know, the workers with the energy efficiency and so on. But some days ago, I attended a, a conference about Industry 4.0. And I was amazed about <laughs> this kind, uh, this new kind, but it's uh, realistic, uh, it's a reality uh, of uh, construction. So I'd like to know if there is a link between the industrial sector uh, specific for construction and the building sector, and uh, uh, in particular about uh, these new competences, I don't know, maybe a new uh, professional uh, in building uh, sector, but which is also in industry. Mm, okay, I don't know if it's quite clear my question. <laughs> uh, Francesca Goni uh, from Italy. Uh, so. mm, from commission perspective, when we are talking about skills, we not try to <laughs> prefer some areas, I would say. So let's say if we would like to support something, we try to support in general manner. So whether it's in the real construction sector or let's say more uh, industrial part of the sector, for us it doesn't play a role. Uh, of course, uh, there is some discussion, if uh, maybe to address it, that uh, uh, whether some construction activities should not return to some factories, I would say, so some kind of prefabrication and stuff like that. So materials, uh, I would say products, are more assembled in some kind of factory than brought, let's say, to the construction side and assembled there to for the final stage. So it might uh, increase quality, also, let's say, might increase uh, uh, comfort, working comfort for employ of workers. So there are some dis there's some discussion about this as well. So. This might need, need, let's say, might lead to some skill needs which are not so frequently used at the moment. But at, at the moment, it's uh, not so obvious, this, let's say, dimension of, let's say, construction technology. Do you want to answer, can you? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know what you refer. I think you went to this uh, digital uh, innovation of 4.0. And, uh, yeah, but I, uh, of course, I think of course the commission doesn't give a preference uh, if it is construction sector or, or digital innovation. But then, if we if we talk about specific uh, uh, software and and tools, we are talking about the construction sector. If we are talking about uh, the building information modeling, if we talk about BIM, we are talking about the construction sector, and uh, and where we uh, stand. Uh, if you take the example of BIM. Uh, for example, in Italy, um, by uh, I think to, mm, it's 2025. I think it's uh, compulsory to uh, put to have BIM in order to participate to uh, public procurement, and and then the issue is where we where we stand. 
and uh, whether we, we are really uh, there if you are if you are not excluding part of uh, of the sector by putting this and now we are accompanying uh, companies into the sector and that's why uh, we welcome uh, projects like the one that Amandine was was mentioning because they put the uh, beam into practice uh, because the truth is uh, we need to f to face the fact that we are entering into the future but we need to find also the way a grad with gradual steps in order uh, to do that you know not to exclude uh, people that are already in the sector and that uh, I would like to make the same comment to what um, Roman said about the prefabricates because uh, uh, it is true that you will need uh, they, they require different skills at the same time uh, uh, there are also issues linked to the fact that uh, yeah the, the skills change but also the jobs change it could bring also to jobs reduction and of course uh, you need always to put uh, to, to strike a balance between uh, between the two uh, let me add about beam let's say it's definitely not possible for commission to support certain software in beam so let's say so it's a uh, we're supporting the idea but not concrete softwares and regarding beam uh, and support uh, we let's say run a group of experts who prepared this summer uh, guidelines for let's say public authorities how beam should be incorporated into tenders let's say how to use the, the, the beam in public procurement okay are there other questions maybe the last one for Hinio. otherwise uh, we go over to the next session good okay thanks thanks to all you tr all three um, and then i want to ask uh, peter waters to come over